with another installment from the This Could Be You series. If you watched my last I Fly on the Wall, I know some of you are angry, like, well, Bella, what about us? You know, because not every time I get a message that could, you know, uh, fit a wide variety of people. But um, that was very important. And if you haven't watched it, um, I threw out some very important facts um, in that Fly on the Wall. I think it was Fly on the Wall number nine, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely go look at that, okay? Now, this is going to be, as always, for whoever cl clicks on it, whoever is asking a question, if you're feeling bad and you click on this, then maybe this could be you. All right, let's see. I feel in my heart um, that I want to title this, Is It Really Over? Because there are some of you out there that is asking that question. You may have had a fight recently with your lover. And you want to know if it's really over this time. Okay, because you tend to break up and get back together. And every time you break up, it always feels like it's the last time. <laughs> Knight of Swords. The Hermit. The Six of Swords. The Page of Wands, Three of Cups, and the Two of Swords. Okay, like I said, this is definitely titled, Is It Really Over This Time? Okay, because it looks like uh, some of you recently had a fight with your lover, all right, and you guys are separated, and maybe they even packed up and left the house. Okay, and you've been waiting for a phone call from them or some sort of message and they're not responding to your calls. Um, you could even hear that they, they've been out partying or out with friends or whatever, but you haven't heard anything from them or you haven't seen them. Ten of Wands. The King of Coins. This could be an Earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus. The Moon. The Three of Wands. And the Queen of Coins. So this is the King and Queen of Pentacles. Okay, Earth Signs. Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. And the Four of Cups. Okay. Advice for this person, please. Is it really over? The Ace of Coins. Book my card. I can even shuffle. And the six of coins. All right. Well, first and foremost, no, it's not over. It looks to me that you guys still have uh, some karmic energy to take care of, some karmic balancing to go. Usually when I see the six of pentacles, I know that justice have not been served yet. So you guys are still working through this energy. It looks like recently you had a fight. Um, you could have had a fight because you're feeling, uh, you're feeling alone. Even though you're in a relationship, you still feel alone. Maybe this person leaves you to take care of everything with this Ten of Wands here. And it, it almost seems like um, they don't have anything to do with the relationship. Okay, this is between Earth signs. Like I said, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo is here. Okay. Um, and it could even represent that maybe you guys are not that Zodiac sign, but maybe this person works a lot. You don't get to see them because they're always working. The Hermit with the King of Coins. They're always working or got something to do or maybe they travel a lot, okay? And you don't really get to see this person. And every time you try to sit down and talk to them, they're fighting you. They're arguing with you, okay? And and they may use the excuse that if I don't work, I can't take care of you. Meanwhile, you know, they haven't slept in a bed with you in a while. And, you know, even outside of the work, you know, in your household, it's just like total lights out. You feel alone. You know, you're not communicating with each other, all right? So um, it's possible that you guys had a really, really big fight um, recently, or you will have a really big fight coming up very soon, okay? And you guys will separate. They will even move out or seemingly move out because the moon card is here, all right? And then with the page of wands and the three of wands, you could be waiting for this person to reach out to you. Maybe, you know, uh, they moved out of town. It could possibly be that they moved out of town. Maybe they... Totally picked up and, and just left. I see this energy a lot with life partners because life partners, you, you're separated more than you're in a relationship, believe it or not. 
okay? And people often take life partners and they start to believe that this is my happily ever after and this is the man I'm supposed to be with for the rest of my life. And and some people don't believe that they could be in a life partnership if it doesn't look perfect. Well, I hate to bust your wound, but, you know, perfection doesn't exist. I often tell you guys that. That perfect somebody that completes you and it feels like, you know, um, they make you so happy. That doesn't exist. That is an illusion. Okay. First and foremost, there was nobody out there that can make you happy. All right. There's nobody out there that can make you happy. They can make you smile for the moment, but that's just a state of being. Okay. Um, what are you being at the moment? Are you being happy? Um, did they surprise you with a nice little gift and they, you know, made you smile? So, you know, you're being happy at the moment. Okay. But as far as somebody, you know, I hate to see these relationships where they get into a partnership and they've been together for five and six years and they're like, you know, I don't feel happy. He doesn't make me happy anymore. I mean, you know, I don't know what the fuck you expect, Linda. Okay. There is nobody out here in the world that can make you happy 24 seven and make you smile. Okay. It just doesn't exist. You have to be happy within yourself and you have to feel complete within yourself. This other person like you are sharing experience with one another. Okay. They're not there as your puppets just to make you happy. They're there to give you an experience, to teach you a lesson, whatever that lesson may be. Everybody's in a different lesson. So you have to get a personal reading to see what your personal lesson is with that individual. Okay. Or um, what you're there to learn. All right. Um, I definitely feel that there could have been, there is going on some infidelity. Okay. And you may not be an earth sign. Maybe you are dating an earth sign, but this person is unfaithful with an earth sign. There's an earth sign that's involved in a situation and they could live in a, another state. Being next to this three of wands. Let me look at this uh, queen of pentacles. Show me this queen of pentacles. The seven of pentacles. And the queen of swords. You can be an ear sign too. One of you can be an ear sign. Okay. As well. Um, Libra. Gemini. And this could also be, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be a third party situation. It can just simply mean that you've been waiting for a long time. You believe that this person is supposed to make you happy with the three of cups. Okay. You've been waiting for a long time. You've been arguing with them or whatever, and you're still waiting for this person to come around with the page of cups. All right. You're still waiting for them to uh, fit in your little box of standards or your long list of laundry list of what the fuck you think a relationship is supposed to be. All right. So you could be at risk of losing your relationship. I put it that way. You could be at risk, especially if you're starting to take it for granted. All right. You're starting to take it for granted and you have a partner and maybe they work all the time. Um, they're working to give you the life that you want, you know, but I try to tell, I try to explain to people that if you're going to have a really bomb life and be with a guy that is, you know, has a lot of money and he takes care of you, then you are going to have a lot of lonely nights. Okay. It's one or the other. Or are you going to have a man that is all over you, loving you 24-7, but he's broke as hell, you know? So you have to come to terms with what it is that you want, you know, what means more to you. Is it financial security or is it overwhelming love and affection? All right. Um, there's never a balance in between the two. I joked with a lot of my clients because we were talking and we were like, you know, how come you can't have, you know, the man that has a lot of money, that's faithful, that you know, uh, never cheats and, you know, just gives you everything that you want and, you know, make you happy. It, it doesn't work that way. What kind of challenge or what kind of lesson would you learn if you had that? And most of you that do have that take it for granted. It's sad because the people that reach out to me <clears throat> that got somewhat of a perfection. The people that reach out to me that has a little bit of perfection they tend to take it for granted and they don't realize that they're having a perfect life. They still will find a problem with that person. All right. That's why I say it doesn't exist because when it does exist, you don't even recognize it and you still think something is wrong with it. You know, if you know, half of you out there, the people that you're praying for or the type of relationship that you're praying for, you know, spirit has, they have given it to you. They have answered your prayers. And then when it came, you took it for granted or you worried to death that it was something was going to go wrong. How many times did you get the perfect man, the man that you were looking for, or the perfect woman, you know, had all the right curves and everything that you asked for. 
and, and things were running really smoothly. And then you start to conjure up in your head that they could be cheating. Or this is too good to be true. I, when is the next time they're going to hurt me? When is the next time they're going to cheat on me? You know, you, you kill a lot of your, um, you know, blessings that come to you. You kill it before it even has a chance to develop. You feel me? So, um, you have to learn how to appreciate when spirit does bring you something that's positive. Now, this individual, let's just say cheating is so big right now, you know, in our new relationships. I'll say new relationships, 5D dating, you know, it, it's so big. It, it's almost inevitable that you're going to meet somebody that is going to be seeing someone else. And this is not just women that are dealing with cheating men. I mean, women are just the biggest hoes, just like men. It, it's fucking terrible. Okay. Let me tell you this, out of all my clients that come to me, a good 70% of them are cheating on their men and it's women, 70%. So it's not always men. Okay. Sometimes it is an ungrateful woman that don't realize what she has and she wants more. Okay. Um, it's going to happen nowadays, now ages, you know, 45 women to one man, it's going to happen. Okay, but what does it mean when it happens? Does that mean that you leave your partner and, and you don't want anything else to do with that partner because you want to look for somebody that doesn't cheat? No, 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 no. First and foremost, you got to figure out why the person is cheating. Okay, a lot of times you'll see that people cheat whenever you start to take them for granted or when you have totally checked out of the relationship. And you no longer look at this person as the apple of your eye. That's when people start cheating. Okay. And it's very easy to take a person for granted. When you first met that person, you was doing everything for them. Cooking, cleaning, rubbing her back, making sure that you laid their clothes out and everything. Okay. Come two years later, you know, you start slacking off because you acted to get that person, but you couldn't keep up that act because that's not really truly in you. All right. Just be honest about what it is that you're looking for. And please stop. Oh, shit. I'm, I got a call coming. Hold on, guys. I forgot where the hell I was talking about, guys. I had a call that came through. But anyway, you got to stop taking these lovers for granted. OK, just be yourself and be honest about what it is that you're looking for. And, you know, um, I'm trying to think of what the hell I was saying before I was interrupted. I can't think of it. Maybe it wasn't important. So anyway, we're definitely talking about two earth signs or an earth sign and an air sign. Okay. In this relationship, it looks like you guys got into a fight. Maybe they moved away. Maybe they took all their shit and moved out the house. And you're wondering if they're going to come back. Let's go to the moon. Six of wands, four of cups. And Ace of Swords. And it could even be, you know, when I look at this here, it, it could even be that they took all their shit and they moved out, but they have every intention of coming back. They just want you to change. They want you to learn how to acknowledge them, appreciate them. Six of Wands. Okay? Stop complaining so much. Stop arguing about what they don't do. You know? Half of you always say, you know, when you get in a fight, I, 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 I don't want nothing to do with him or I don't want nothing to do with her. I want it to be over. And then they pick up and move out and you're sitting there screaming like, is it coming back? <laughs> Y'all just do the most. Y'all do the most. Just listen, Linda. Okay. I feel that this person has separated from you for a minute so that you could really be clear on what it is that you want. Okay. <clears throat> I always tell you guys. Respect the recycling process. If you don't want this person, if you don't want to no longer work to keep this relationship going, okay, let the person go. By all means, let them go. Okay? If you don't want to fight for this relationship, you don't want to put any effort or energy, let them go. While this person has separated from you, while they have left the house, okay, while they have moved out and it seems like they're having the time of their life because they're not, okay? It just looks like they're trying to do some shit to make you change. It looks like they didn't even want to leave the house. It looks like they left the house to make you change because you complain all the time, argue with them about how unhappy you are, okay? While they're gone, sit back and really think, you know, 
Is it really over? Do I really not love this person no more? Do I really not have anything else to offer this person or learn from this individual? And then when you get that opportunity to talk to them, be clear on what it is that you want. If you love that individual, tell them you love them. Tell them you love them. Tell them that, you know, I don't know nothing about a relationship. I may not have handled it the right way. I'm blaming you, you blaming me, and we're not compromising. Let's work on our relationship. Let's fix it. Let's learn how to appreciate one another. Okay? It's going to take work. It's going to take time. It takes time to build that perfect relationship. I say it doesn't exist because there's nobody else with endurance. Most people don't have endurance. They don't know how to compromise with one another. They don't know how to communicate. And they don't know how to be patient. Okay, they want a jack-in-a-box. They want the shit to come perfectly made already. But most of these women that's been in relationships for 20 and 30 years will tell you that it took a lot of work to get their relationship to a point of where there's no arguing and you both understand one another. Okay, it took a lot of work. And it will continue to take work. Okay, because that's what relationships are all about. What good is getting something that's already set in stone and perfect sooner or later you're going to get bored with it you're going to get bored with it okay if it's perfect already and you don't need to do no work or no energy to it and it just already came perfect and and then you know he comes home and he tells you how beautiful you are every single day and he gives you everything you fucking want and he loves you you will find a way to cheat on that motherfucker okay and break him the fuck down it happens all the time You're a bitch. You you do everything that I fucking say. <laughs> you know, it doesn't cause a challenge. And people don't like when their relationship doesn't cause a challenge. It becomes mundane. It becomes boring. And then you have those women out there that had nothing but bad relationships. That say, you know, if I can just get me a man to love me unconditionally, accept me for who I am, and we compromise and everything's 50-50, I'll be so happy. And then they give it to you and you automatically think that it's the same badass relationship that you had for the last 10 years of your life. You know, so you're, you're going to sabotage. Everybody does. All right. Who are the people that get into relationships? Who are the people that get the opportunity to have a husband or a wife? These are individuals that want to experience their different states of being. Okay. Meaning that they want to experience how they are in relation to another person. Okay. They don't want the people that want somebody that's going to help you, you know, help you financially because you're broke or help you raise your kids and, you know, uh, somebody that has good sex and only can fuck you real good. They're usually the ones that are waiting on relationships forever because that's, that's the wrong concept to have or waiting for somebody to make you happy those are the most single people in the world. Okay? Having a relationship is a sacrifice. Okay? You're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to sacrifice the things that you like to do for what your partner likes to do. You're going to have to share things that you're not used to sharing. You're going to have to get up and cook and clean and, and fucking, you know, cater to someone else. They're sacrifices. Okay, relationships are a sacrifice. Okay. So, your partner's gone. He moved out the house. She moved out the house. You don't know where the hell they're at. They're not answering your calls. They don't, you know, call you back or whatever. And you think it's doomed. You think it's over. It's not over. Okay. Spirit has given you the opportunity to decide, do you want this person back? You keep torturing the fuck out of them every time they come back. You keep cheating on them every time they come back. Do you really want this person back? When you have become clear in your mind that you truly want this individual back, then when they come back, work at it and, and be patient. Okay? It's better to have a man that cheats than to not have a man at all. I'm going to tell you that. Because it challenges you. What does cheating do to the other individual? Well, it challenges you to you know raise your standards and to be better. Be better lovers. Okay? It, it keeps you on your toes. It lets you know that you're not the, you know, the end-all, be-all to this man's life or this woman's life. Okay? 
it challenges you. So, you know, cheating is a good thing in a sense because it'll keep you on your toes and it'll also make you better lovers. It's just a good thing. It's, it's not, you know, if you would stop looking at cheating as I'm going to lose him, I'm going to lose her. If you would just stop looking at it like that and just see the beauty in cheating and how magnificent spirit put it together in order for, you know, um, you to become a better person. It's marvelous. It really is. Okay. So he'll be back. Give him a minute. She'll be back. Give her a minute. Okay. They're tired of arguing and fighting with you. That's all. It's just a little overwhelming. Knight of Wands. I mean, Knight of Swords. Ten of Wands. It's overwhelming. You keep complaining about what this person don't do. I, you know, I talked to a woman last night. <laughs> and she said, she was married. I won't mention your name, baby. She was married to her husband for a long time. Over ten years. And... She kept asking, you know, when is the next person going to come in? When is the next person going to come in? I mean, it was such a fucking urgency. And I'm listening to this woman and I'm like, why is she so fucking eager? You just spent the last 15, 16, 17 years with that motherfucker. Why are you so eager to get into another relationship? And then when I broke it all the way down, she don't even know what to do about relationships. How can you be with somebody 15 to 17 years and you don't know how to activate this person to do what you want them to do? You didn't learn the lesson with the last one. So you damn sure ain't going to learn it with a new motherfucker. If you can't control that person you've been with over 10 years, you damn sure ain't going to do it with a person you just met, Linda. Okay, you're not going to do it with a person you just met. People are eager. Those of you that are getting out of marriages, you're getting out of long-term partners. Stop running looking for the next man to come through. You don't even know what the fuck you were supposed to learn with the last man and you just spent 15 20 years with this motherfucker they are not go spirit is not going to give you a relationship right away and if it is a relationship right away it's probably going to be some doomed shit i'm telling you they're not going to give you a perfect man right away they're looking at you like we gave you the perfect man you had 15 20 years with this person that was perfect honey oh you you, you didn't know it was perfect okay well let me show you what imperfection looked like and, and then you get in third party situations and the person that you just met is playing you and, and fucking all kind of people and don't want to commit to you. That's imperfect. But you just had somebody for 15, 20 years. That was perfect to spirit. It's perfect as it's going to get. And you couldn't figure out the glue to make that work. Anybody that's getting out of a relationship when you've been with a person for longer than 10 years... You should not be looking to rush into a new relationship. You should not be. You should be looking at that relationship and healing from the things that you went through and realizing why this person came into your life. But when you call me up and you've been divorced for three months or you just got divorced for a year or you've been divorced for two weeks and you're looking for another partner, I know that you're rebounding. That's called codependency. You're rebounding. You need someone to complete you. Okay, you need to feel completed by someone else. Okay, sit down. How does the song go? Sit down, be humble. <laughs> okay, realize the lessons that you were supposed to learn with the last one so that this new one that comes in, it can be perfection. And make sure, you know, your, your plate is clean. You have to have a void for someone to fill. Those of you that have been married for 20 years and you tell me that you're not happy... And I ask you what was the lesson that you learned and you say that motherfuckers will cheat on you and, and they ain't no good and all that. That is fucking downright terrible. I don't know what the fuck you think a new person is going to do. If you was with someone for 20 years and you didn't learn no positivity, <laughs> what do you think you're going to learn with that new motherfucker that comes in? Sometimes I think you forget that you have to put a lot of effort and a lot of energy into getting it to even close to that 20 years that you had with that one person. It's crazy, Linda. It is crazy. Yes, that person will be back as soon as you make up in your mind that I'm going to have endurance. I'm going to respect this person. And I'm just going to respect the fact that they're growing. What happened to that? What happened to through sickness and health until death do us part? 
and I respect your growth. And sometimes you're going to make mistakes. And I'm going to accept that because you're not perfect. And neither am I. I want you to receive me when I make mistakes and I fall and bump my knees. Okay, I want you to pick me back up and brush them off. So why can't you guys do that to the partners that you're with? Respect the person's growth. And during that growth, they're going to cheat. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to hurt your feelings. Because they're babies and they're growing. That's the whole purpose of relationships. <laughs> they're growing. You can't respect that, then you should be single. Okay? Is it really over? No, Linda. It's not really over. But it is a break. It is a pregnant pause. So that you can get your mind together and you can figure out whether this person is who you really want to be with. And whether you still have any fight in you left. Do you still have fight in you left? Or is you done? This motherfucker hurt you too much. You can't take it. I don't know what you're going to do with something new. Because they're going to hurt you even worse. Especially now. This 5D dating is off the fucking chain. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. It's off the chain. It's not like it was 10 years ago when you met Frank. Okay. 20 years ago when you met Paul. It's nothing like that. I'm telling you right now. If you're going to step your ass out in 2018 and try to date these new motherfuckers. You better have some fucking endurance because they are going to drag you through the motherfucking mud. I'm serious. Okay. Just like that story I just gave about that young girl. There is, the competition is unreal now because women and men are doing anything to keep their relationship. And with your humble, reserved ass who met your husband in, you know, 2001, in 1998 and you don't do that because you're a you're a lady <laughs> then you damn sure don't want no fucking man in 2018 okay for those of you that are trying to date in 2018 you don't have nobody and you're sitting there bella where's my soulmate where's my twin flame first of all quit looking for a motherfucking twin flame because that shit is not nothing i promise you you got the fucking definition of twin flame totally wrong Okay, don't get me on that because uh, y'all know how I get when I start talking about twin flame shit. But I promise you, if you want to date in 2018, you are single, been single for a long time. You're over 35. You want a new man. Everybody's asking, Bella, what do you do to get a man now in 2018? Okay, Linda. You get you some motherfucking pornos. That's number one. Okay? Get you the freakiest, nastiest shit on the market. Because that's what the fuck these people are doing. Okay? Also, you get you some different wigs and some makeup. And learn how to transform into multiple bitches in one week. You got to be about 70 different women. <laughs> I'm serious as fuck. This is what you got to do to date now. Okay? And don't, please... Please don't be controlling and worry about cheating. Okay? You got to damn near, you know, have threesomes and, and, and be fucking bisexual to have a man nowadays. I'm telling you. There is no more where men used to look at you and say, that's a bad bitch. I got a bad woman. I got the best woman on the market. They don't do that no more because there's so much fucking competition. It's unreal because there's 45 to 1. Okay, so if you want to be that reserved chick that don't do anything and you want to make the man wait 30 days rule and 90 day rule, girl, you're going to lose, honey. You're going to lose. The minute that next bad bitch come down the street, he's going to walk the fuck off and go hook up with her. Okay. It's another thing. You cannot be shy. You can't no longer, you know, how you like somebody, you have a crush and you don't tell them what the fuck you want, you know. You just go around them and be nice or whatever, but you're too scared to tell them what you feel. Oh, she, she, look, you'll get ran over, honey. You got to be strong enough to tell them, listen, motherfucker, this is what I want. I like you. I want to hook up with you. 
let's go out on a date. I want it more than friends. I want to be a woman. I want to be your wife. You got to just be honest because people, they can't read minds no more. It, you know, what is going to stop him from choosing that woman that's very open? Let her, let him know what she wants. She's already beautiful and she does everything against your reserved ass. That's making this man wait for 90 and 120 days. And I'm waiting for Jesus to, <laughs> I'm waiting for God to bless my union and I'm getting married before I have sex. Okay, Linda, do you. <laughs> okay. Let's see how that works out for you. I'm telling you, it, it's hard. It's very hard to date nowadays. So when you got you a little piece of pie, my couples, my women that have a relationship, that already have investments, you invested eight years, nine years, ten years, three years, four years, you're invested, you better fucking appreciate that. I'm telling you, because dating now, it's almost impossible. It's impossible. People want to be free so they can date multiple people. Women and men. Okay, there's no boundaries no more. Okay, LGBT community has grown outrageous. It's it's outrageous. I'm telling you, nobody has any preference anymore. It's open. It's open. You know, back then, you know, there used to be, if you were bisexual, there was an element of it being hidden. Honey, in 2018... One in three people are bisexual. One in three. Good luck. Okay. I'm just keeping it one. I'm, I'm keeping it 100 with you. All right. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember, special 50 is going on. You want to sit down. You want to talk. You want to figure out your situation. I'm the one to do it with. Okay. Just be ready when you book me. I don't bullshit. I'm not going to sit on this phone and bullshit you and tell you the stars is blue and it's going to be so perfect. I'm not into that. Okay, do you have a fucking problem, Linda? Do you want it fixed? I am the one that's going to fix the problem, period. Okay, if you're not ready, contact somebody that, you know, sugarcoats it or, you know, pets your hair or whatever. Okay, but when you're ready for real change, call Bella. Allseeingitero at gmail.com. Okay, look in the description box below. Like I said, Special 50 is running right now. Reserve. <laughs> Those of you that are sitting on invoices and you're, you keep contacting me. Why is my invoice canceled? Your invoice will cancel within 48 hours. Okay. If you have not booked, don't hit me up until you're ready to book. It will cancel within 48 hours. I have so many people hitting me up with invoices. They want to, they want to get in. Okay. And I am reserving and I don't like to push past the whole month. So when I start canceling your invoices in 48 hours, it's because there are so many people that are hitting me up that want to get in for the special 50. And if you try to sit on your invoice for three and four days and five days, it probably won't be there. Because I don't want to go past the month of March. This is March Madness. I'm trying to get everybody in before the month of March is over. All right? I'm just letting you guys know. Don't ever just send me money. I tell you that all the time. Don't just send me through PayPal. You just send the money out of nowhere. And think that that's going to get you a spot. No, Linda, stop doing that. Hit me up. Get an invoice. Make sure I got spots available. Okay? Hit me up first. All seeing out tarot at Gmail. I love you so much. I hope you enjoyed this. And remember, you were thinking it, but I'm going to say it. Thank you, guys.